JFT just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's daily market review for March the 27th. I am Haralambos Pissuros, head of research here at JFD, and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, le let's uh, read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded higher against all but one of the, other ma of the other major currencies on Monday and during the Asian session uh, Tuesday. It gained the most versus JPY, the Euro, NZD, and CHF in that order, while, while it lost some ground only versus uh, the Canadian dollar. Now, the strengthening of the US dollar suggests that uh, risk aversion may have kicked in at some point yesterday and today in Asia. However, the fact that the yen was the main loser points otherwise. Thus, with the FX, um, with the FX market painting a blurry picture with regards to the broader market sentiment, we prefer to turn our gaze to the equity world. Here we see that um, most major European and US indices traded in the red, with the exceptions uh, being uh, Italy's FTSE, MIB, and the UK FTSE 100. Nonetheless, market participants decided to add back to their risk exposures during the Asian session today. Now, in, I, in our view, what may have resulted in a setback in European and US indices may have been a blend of developments surrounding uh, Ukraine and remarks uh, by Fed Chair uh, Jerome Powell. Yesterday, during the early European morning, Ukraine rejected uh, Russian calls to surrender the port city of Mariupol in exchange for a safe passage out of the city, and later in the day, Fresh reports hits the wire that the European Union is considering an oil embargo on Russia. European leaders will meet with US President Biden for a series of uh, summits uh, this week aimed at uh, strengthening their stance against uh, Russia. All this may, uh, may have been uh, uh, all this may have been a reason why equities traded lower and perhaps the main one for uh, the rally in oil prices. Now, the other uh, driver behind the risk aversion during the European and US sessions may have been remarks by Fed Chair uh, Jerome Powell, who said that the Fed must move quickly to bring down to high inflation, adding that uh, they may need to use larger liftoffs if, um, if, deemed, uh, if deemed necessary. These comments may have also been uh, the fuel behind the US dollar's rebound. We also got to hear from ECB President Lagarde yesterday, who warned that the Fed and the ECB may have, um, uh, excuse me, uh, the Fed and the ECB may move out of sync in the foreseeable future, as the war in Ukraine has vastly different effects on their economies. The main message we got from the latest ECB meeting is that uh, officials we are more concerned over high inflation than the effects of uh, the war on the euro area economy. But Lagarde's uh, remarks. Um, uh, yesterday raised questions on that front and consequently as to whether we will get any rate hike uh, by this bank uh, this year. Now, as for our view, monetary policy divergence between the Fed and the ECB is likely to keep Euro dollar under, under selling interest, and we, and we already witnessed uh, that yesterday with the pair falling back below the, the round number of one, 110. As uh, for equities, we prefer to maintain our neutral stance with regards to the bigger picture. Yes, we saw a setback yesterday following some concerning headlines surrounding the Russia-Ukraine saga, but yet it seems that the retreats, the retreats are not as large as the rebounds and advances we get on positive headlines. What's more, several stock indices remain above uh, the key resistance barriers they overcame recently, which suggests that we may see some more gains in the short run, but with uh, the war still raging, 
we cannot call for a long lasting recovery. Now, as for today's events, the calendar appears, appears very light with no major data releases on the agenda. However, we will hear from several monetary officials, including SMB President Lagarde again, SNB Chairman Thomas Jordan, Feds Williams, Mester and Daly, as well as Bank of England member Canliffe. Tomorrow, during the early European session, we have the UK CPIs for February, with uh, both the headline and core rates expected to have continued rising. Specifically, the headline rate is forecast to have inched up to 5.9% year over year from 5.5%, while the core one is forecast to have risen to 4.8% from 4.4%. At last week's uh, meeting, Bank of England officials decided to hike interest rates by another 25 basis points via an 8 to 1 voting, with a descender calling for no increase at all. Remember that at the February gathering, officials lifted rates by 25 basis points as well, but the vote was uh, 5 to 4, with the four descenders calling for a 50 basis points increase. Compared to that, last week's, decisions, uh, last week's uh, decision reveals a more cautious approach uh, by policymakers and raises questions as to whether they will indeed proceed as aggressive as the market has been pricing in heading, heading into that gathering. That said, accelerating inflation further above the bank's target of 2% could revive expectations that the bank may need to act more quickly, something that could prove supportive for the British pound. So, that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the Weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 8 o'clock a.m. GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So, goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.